Florence is regarded as one of the world's most culturally and historically significant cities, with a wealth of magnificent architecture and historical sites. Florence is the capital of the Tuscany region of Italy, with a population of 383,000 people and a population of 1.5 million in the surrounding metropolitan area. This beautiful city is located in central Italy and has a well-developed train network that connects it to Pisa and Bologna. Today, tourism is unquestionably a significant element of Florence's economy, with an average of 13 million visitors every year. Apart from tourism, Florence has a thriving industrial sector producing items like furniture, rubber, chemicals, and food. Historically, industrial regions like Prato Pistoria have exported high-quality goods like Vespa scooters. Florence will not disappoint you if you are searching for a dose of culture and want to see great buildings such as the Duomo. Let's have a look at some of the top things to do in Florence. 1. Florence Cathedral The Duomo, as it is simply known in Florence, is the city's jewel. It is possibly the most famous cathedral in the world. It was built in 1436, but the magnificent front facade wasn't finished until the 19th century. The Duomo, which is located in the heart of the ancient city, stands out for miles and makes an imposing sight among the other medieval structures. The cathedral's exterior and front facades are colossal, with white marble with red, pink, and green polychrome decorations. The color and style are stunning. In addition, a massive dome sits atop the cathedral and may be reached through a set of steps. Although the cathedral's interior is sparse in comparison, it nonetheless exudes grandeur and contains several notable features, such as the huge clock face and the stunning Last Judgment fresco that covers the underside of the dome. 2. Palazzo Vecchio While the Duomo is Florence's most important religious structure, the Palazzo Vecchio is the city's most important administrative structure. This structure served as the Signoria of the Republic of Florence's palace and, later, as a town hall. The palazzo, which was completed in 1299, was planned by the same architects that worked on the Duomo and the Santa Croce Cathedral. The structure, which has a square form and a number of crenellations, resembles a castle, and it also features a massive bell tower. A sequence of coats of arms may be seen on the front facade, representing several families and notable figures in the city's history. The palace's interior is likewise magnificent, with chambers such as the Hercules Room and the Room of Cybele that were originally furnished. 3. Ponte Vecchio There are many notable buildings in Florence, and the Ponte Vecchio is a well-known and historic bridge. The Vecchio Bridge, which spans the Arno River, is known for the quantity of shops built into the walls of the bridge, its colorful past, and the abundance of businesses that line the main promenade. The bridge has been dated back to 996, although its real origin is unknown. Take a peek around this amazing edifice and the numerous businesses and vendors. Jewelers, art dealers, and souvenir shops can all be found here. The bridge opens up near the middle, and you're rewarded with spectacular views down the Arno. Walk along the Corridoio Vazariano to observe the exterior of the Ponte Vecchio and its wonderful house-like appendages, in addition to strolling on the bridge itself. 4. Piazzale Michelangelo In the entire city, the square provides the greatest perspective of Florence and the cathedral. The Piazzale Michelangelo is high on a hill near the Bobali Gardens and the Palazzo Pitti on the south bank of the River Arno. A magnificent bronze statue of David stands in the square center, while a number of vendors and artists sell their items along the square's perimeter. The view from the Piazza is unrivaled, and you can see Florence in all its beauty, framed by the Arno River. This is the spot to go if you want a photograph that will last a lifetime. You can also watch the sunset from one of the square's outdoor cafes. In the spring, there are two flower gardens that bloom with thousands of different rows and iris species. Plan to visit early in the morning or late at night to avoid the throng. Piazzale Michelangelo is open to the public 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. 5. Piazza della Signoria The Piazza della Signoria is second only to the Piazza del Duomo in importance and has a variety of structures and classical art. Due to its central location, the square is located to the south of the Piazza del Duomo and is easily accessible. The majestic Palazzo Vecchio, with its massive clock tower and amazing statues of David and Hercules, is the Piazza's major building. The lovely Neptune Fountain is to the left of the palace, and the Loggia di Lanzi is to the right, with stunning Renaissance sculptures of Perseus, 
Menelaus, and Hercules. Finally, a large statue of Cosimo Medici rises beside the Neptune Fountain, and the buildings are lined with high-end boutiques. 6. Campanile di Giotto Many people believe Giotto's Campanile is connected to the Duomo, although it is actually a separate structure. This structure is a true work of Gothic architecture and one of the city's most well-known designs. The outside of the tower is divided into five distinct levels and displays polychrome marble decoration in dazzling green and pink colors, which is also found on the Duomo. The edifice was conceived by the great artist Giotto and built from 1334 to 1359, although it was completed by Valenti after Giotto died in 1343. The tower is covered in sculptures, artwork, and painted panels, and it is a classic Renaissance masterpiece. Apart from the artwork, the 414 steps in the tower provide spectacular views of Florence in the du 7. Basilica of Santa Croce While Florence's cathedral is enormous, the Basilica of Santa Croce is wonderfully lovely and inviting. It too was built about the same time as the Duomo and has a front facade with pink, green, and red marble polychrome panels set against polished white stone. Apart from the stunning facade, the inside houses the tombs of some of the world's most renowned Renaissance artists and scholars, including his Galileo, Michelangelo, and Machiavelli. The Basilica takes center stage in the Piazza di Santa Croce, neatly framing the plaza. In the Piazza di Santa Croce, there are various antiquarian stalls and food vendors worth visiting. Wander the streets and sample the cafes and restaurants, shop the boutiques, and stay late for some fantastic nightlife. 8. The Baboli Gardens, which are connected to the Palazzo Pitti, are vast and lovely. The gardens, which cover 45,000 square meters, are among Florence's largest and most enjoyable to walk around. The Baboli Gardens, which date back to the 16th century, are divided into numerous sections, including a main lawn with a fountain, an obelisk, a collection of worldwide trees, plants, and flowers, and several huge ponds with water elements. If you wish to get away from the city, come here and relax while admiring the stunning patterns and natural specimens. The Medici family developed the Baboli Gardens in the 16th century. A huge number of statues and fountains may be seen in the lovely and very Italianesque garden. The gardens have gone through numerous periods of expansion and reorganization. 9. Santa Maria Navella Church, which is located in front of the main railway station, is a lovely structure with a design that is similar to both the Duomo and the Basilica of Santa Croce. Another fine example of Renaissance architecture with a striking front facade, made of polychrome and white marble. While the facade and surrounding pits are spectacular in and of themselves, the interior is equally so. A plethora of chapels dedicated to various affluent and renowned Florentine families throughout the Renaissance era are housed within the church. The walls and ceilings are covered in detailed frescoes, and the church houses works by notable artists like his body Celli and Ghiberti. 10. The Piazza della Repubblica One of Florence's oldest neighborhoods is located on the side of the city's Roman Forum. The exact center of the ancient settlement is marked by the Colonna dell'Abbondanza, a monument built in 1431. The Plaza, which was densely populated throughout the medieval era, was extensively restored in the 1800s. The Plaza's makeover is commemorated by a triumphal arch on the west side. The Plaza is today noted for its exquisite neoclassical structures, high-end stores, and outdoor cafes, notably the well-known Jube Rasse Cafe, which is a popular hangout for artists and authors.